it's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. You guys, I have some exciting news. Johnny Depp is going to appear in a brand new movie where he's going to play King Louis the 15th. Now the movie is called Janine Dubari, which is about his famous mistress who pretty much ruled the roost while he was king. I'm very excited for this brand new movie and Johnny Depp, y'all, speaks a little bit of French. Now, this movie is going to premiere at the Cannes Movie Festival on May 16th. Now, if you're not aware, on my other YouTube channel, Royal Daily Tea History and Fashion, I did a video in regards to the affair of the necklace and the downfall of Marie Antoinette. Now, there's a rumor that King Louis XV commissioned a very expensive necklace for his mistress, Janine Dubarre, but unfortunately, he passed away before the necklace could be completed. Now, it is rumored there was a huge scandal that involved Marie Antoinette and this necklace, and many people believe it led to the downfall of Marie Antoinette and the French Revolution. So if you're interested, go over to my other YouTube channel and check out that video, but I'm very excited for this upcoming movie with Johnny Depp. Now, you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through today, so you know what to do. Sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the royal daily tea. So King Charles is having a little bit of a problem when it comes to his religious service for his coronation ceremony. We all know that King Charles wants to be a king of the people. He is a modernist monarch and wants to be more inclusive with people with diverse faiths. The problem is, as king and monarch, he is the head of the Church of England, which is a Christian Anglican religion. But now he wants to be more inclusive and regard other members who are not of Christian faith faith. But this is causing a major pushback from the Church of England, and it could be a major clash against a multi-faith ceremony and be a direct violation of the canon law. So if you remember during the times of King Edward VIII, where it was a Roman Catholic nation, and in order for him to divorce his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, and marry Anne Boleyn, King Edward VIII got rid of the Roman Catholic faith and declared himself the head of the Church of England, which is a Protestant religion. Now, church sources are saying the monarch has been told that his desire for a, quote, diverse ceremony, including participation by non-Christians, is risking the centuries-old canon law which bars Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, and other faith leaders from reading out prayers during the service. Now, the tensions have arisen nearly 30 years after Charles famously declared his wish to be defender of faith and not simply defender of the faith a title that all English sovereigns since Henry VIII have held as the head of the Church of England. Now, a lot of people are wondering if there's going to be a compromise, an alternate option that could be for the king to hold a separate ceremony at which other faith leaders would play an active role. In a joint message last month, Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who will be the officiant at the ceremony, said, It's at the center. It's a Christian service rooted in longstanding tradition and Christian symbolism. Now, the Archbishop is serving as a religious guidance. For the king, and he's letting the king know his significance of his oath, the commitments he will make to his subjects, and the Christian symbolism of the regalia. Now, the king, as the supreme governor of the Church of England, is required by the Bill Rights Act of 1688, modified by the Accession Declaration Act of 1910, to declare at either his coronation 
or at the first state opening of Parliament that he is a faithful Protestant and will secure the Protestant succession. So this could be a major problem if King Charles goes back on that oath. In addition, the Coronation Act of 1688 requires the king to declare he will maintain the established Anglican Protestant Church. So this could be a major problem if he goes really woke and has multi-religions participate in this ceremony. So I think Charles has his heart in the right place, but four weeks until the coronation, this is probably not the time to introduce this into his coronation ceremony. Well, the big story of the day, it has been announced that Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, will be attending his father, King Charles's coronation next month on May 6th. Now, word is his wife, Meghan Markle, will stay home with their children, Archie and Lily, in Montecito, California. Now, we literally just talked about this in my video from yesterday, where I said I do see Harry going alone to the coronation. As we all know, Megzi Markle is not going to face the music. She's going to send her wound up flying monkey to go face it all alone because Meghan Markle does not like to face the backlash. We all know that's what she does, and it's her signature style. Megan Clean Hands Markle, who's going to stay home and play the dutiful mother and wife and throw little Archie his little birthday party. I am sure we're going to get some pap released photographs of little Archie blowing out some candles for his birthday right during the king's coronation. How much you want to bet there's going to be some photographs from a backyard barbecue birthday bash for little Prince Archie? I bet it's going to happen. I mean, just like they did for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee when they released a photograph of little Lily Bet on her birthday. Remember that one where just the gardener and the nanny and the photographer attended that little ill-planned birthday party right in the middle of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee? Let's not forget little Archie is going to be the center of attention on May 6th in Montecito. This is also the second time that Prince Harry will be away from his son on his birthday. Last year, he was seen playing polo on his son's birthday, but he's actually going to a real event this year, his father's coronation. Now, we all know this is a very smart move by Harry to attend the coronation. Now, according to Omid Scooby-Doo, this is going to be a very brief and quick visit, kind of an in and out moment by Prince Harry. He's going to grace everyone with his presence at Westminster Abbey for the actual coronation ceremony. And then he's off on his private jet back to Montecito, California, just in time to help Archie blow out the candles. In my opinion, it's going to be like Harry behind the candlestick, where he's going to get very little camera time and pretty much the cold shoulder from the rest of the family. He is strictly there to play his part for the PR cameras and he's out. I really doubt that King Charles or the rest of the royal family is going to give him any real time as they're going to be extremely busy for one and two, I don't think anyone really wants to talk to him to be honest. Now, in my opinion, it's going to be pretty much like it was for Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee, where Harry's going to be there for one appearance and one appearance only. So we're not going to have Meghan rolling down the car window or playing picky boo in the curtains. But mark my words, there's going to be some kind of photo bomb with little Meghan and little Archie and the little birthday party. They're going to try to upstage the coronation, but it's not going to work. But again, I do believe this is Harry realizing they have to make some kind of appearance, especially him for his brand. So anyways, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. So there's a brand new bombshell book about King Charles that is coming out. 
called Our King Charles III, The Man and the Monarch Revealed by Royal Family Expert Robert Jobson. So the Daily Mail and the Daily News have some excerpts that they have released before the publication of the book that is due to be released on Thursday. Now in this article, they give you the five biggest bombshells that are being released in the book. Now, apparently, according to the book, Meghan Markle was never on the royal payroll. Now, as we famously heard, King Charles said, quote, I am not an ATM. And this was a major problem early on in the relationship between Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, and King Charles. Now, when Meghan Markle married into the royal family, she was essentially marrying into one of the world's richest families families. So to her, it was cha-ching, cha-ching, I could buy whatever I want. And of course, Prince Harry was doing the whatever Meghan wants, Meghan gets. He was trying to play the big daddy, Daddy Warbucks, and impress Meghan Markle with his endless amount of money. So Meghan Markle was spending like crazy even before she got married. She had one outfit that she wore for an engagement photo that cost $75,000. Right, $75,000. The problem is, is that Big Daddy King Charles was picking up the tab. We all know that Prince Harry was not rich. The royal family is rich, but not Prince Harry living a little not caught with their Ikea furniture and a very small salary that was given to him by the military and, of course, money for being a working royal. But Meghan Markle thought she could go balls to the wall and spend whatever the hell she wanted and they were going to pay for it. Well, pretty soon, King Charles is getting these huge bills and he's like, wait a minute here. I'm not an ATM, guys. We have to cut this off. The spending is outrageous. Now, this infuriated Prince Harry when King Charles said, I'm not an ATM and I can't afford to pay for your wife. I'm already paying for other members of the royal family. So immediately, Prince Harry has a slight. You know, they are the collectors of slights. His narcissism was being chipped away with the old, I'm not as loved as William is because I'm the spare and William gets everything and I don't get anything. You guys don't love me. Wah. You know, the typical spare cry. Well, now they're telling him, we're not paying for your wife's extravagant fashion. You need to rein it in. We can't afford it. Even though they technically have millions upon millions of dollars, all of their spending is known publicly, so they could not in good conscience talk about Meghan's spending habits that Charles was paying for. So Harry was extremely upset, and he felt like they were being against Meghan from the start. So, of course, there was also the fact that a lot of people in the royal family felt that Harry and Meghan were moving extremely fast and that his brother famously said, quote, are you sure, Harold? She is an American actress. After all, anything could happen again. Boom, another slight against Harry. He's collecting him left and right and putting him in the jar to come out and weaponize against the royal family at a later date. And we all know the minute he told Meghan that William was not on board with their relationship, he became public enemy number one to the narcissistic nymph queen, Meghan Markle. Again, when you're a narcissist, you definitely want to take over the people in your life and have complete control. So she had to get rid of his ties to his family. And then we have naysayer, big bro William. Oh, he's definitely on her chopping block. Now, it also came out that Charles and William stopped trusting Harry and Meghan Markle right after the Oprah Winfrey interview aired in March of 2021. Unsurprisingly, they burned some major bridges there, and the royal family felt 
hurt, they felt betrayed, that they publicly went out and aired their grievances and said horrible things against the royal family. So obviously after that point, they knew that Harry and Meghan could no longer be trusted. From then on, Harry's father and brother decided they would no longer treat him as a trusted, if often infuriating, member of the family. Jobson wrote in his book, quote, in short, they would never again meet Harry alone. There would always be another person in the room. The two men were particularly upset that Harry claimed to know they felt, quote, trapped as members of the royal family, according to the book. Now, another takeaway was even Queen Elizabeth II was tired of Harry's drama. This is very sad what he did to his grandmother in the last few years of her life. Considering the fact she lost her beloved husband and was dealing with bone cancer, she had to deal with Megxit. Now, according to Jobson, by the time Elizabeth died in September of 2022, Quote, Harry had previous few supporters left in the family. That's not shocking. Now, one of those supporters he had was his grandmother. I personally believe she was pretty much the last person besides Eugenie on his side. He wrote in his book, quote, The Queen was frankly mystified by Harry and Meghan's behavior, describing it as, quote, quite mad. She came to believe, however, that her grandson was so consumed by his love for his wife that it was clouding his judgment. It's called whipped, if you know what I mean. Now, Queen Elizabeth was also very disappointed in Harry and Meghan's decision to step away from the royal family and move to America because she believed they had a missed opportunity. And I, for one, also believe they really did mess up a really good opportunity to represent a biracial woman to the UK, to the Commonwealth. They could have done a lot of good, but their egos and narcissism got in the way. Now, the book also mentioned that King Charles was extremely upset when Harry went public and announced his relationship with Meghan Markle on October 31st of 2016. Now, a week later in November is when Harry released that infamous statement of leave her alone, leave Meghan alone, that she's being harassed and the abuse will not be tolerated by you evil UK press. We all know that Megzi was in Enjoying this immense attention that she never quite got as an actress. Unfortunately, this happened during the time when King Charles was on tour in Bahrain, and it kind of overshadowed his trip. He apparently was only given a 20-minute notice that this announcement was going to happen. So needless to say, Charles was extremely upset by the poor choice and poor taste that Harry used and the timing. It was considered bad manners to interrupt the tour with his relationship news. So again, you had Harry and Meghan from the very beginning demanding special treatment and attention for Meghan Markle that was unprecedented. The way that they bulldozed and bullied members of the royal family to heed to Meghan's demands. They felt that Meghan Markle was above everyone else, that she was more important, and that the entire royal family needed to stop what they were doing and protect Megan at all costs. Again, they were saying that what was happening to Megan was worse than happened to any other member of the royal family, which we all know is not true. But then they played the race card saying, well, she's being abused and vilified in the press because she's biracial. It's the whole race element. But Harry and Meghan said they don't agree with this rite of passage that the royal family was telling Meghan and Harry to just, you know, keep on keeping on and just ignore the press. They all had to deal with it. Harry and Meghan wanted the press to completely stop with all of the negative stories. And because the royal family wouldn't get on board, they were now against Megan. They weren't supporting Megan. And of course, Harry was trying to bulldoze and bully the royal family into submission. 
it got to the point where the queen didn't want to take his phone calls anymore because he was constantly calling and complaining to the queen about his daddy not paying for his bills and his father was no longer taking his phone calls because he says I'm not an ATM and we need to rein in your wife's spending you're acting ridiculous you're making public announcements during people's tour and you're demanding the royal family stop what they're doing and make public statements about the press when every single person in the royal family has dealt with the exact same issue. Now we all know the Queen has the never complain, never explain motto that has worked for many members of the royal family, but Meghan, that wasn't going to work for her. She wanted action. So of course, they threw their toys out the pram and left for Megxit. Now again, this is very sad considering the last three years of Her Majesty's life, she had to deal with the loss of her husband, cancer, and a wayward grandson and a horrible wife, now calling them racist, now saying horrible things and sharing their public dirty laundry to the world. That had to have been absolutely mortifying for Her Majesty the Queen, and I feel that makes Harry look like a royal knob. He's a royal knob. There's just not a nicer way to say it. So this book is going to be released on Thursday. It sounds like a very interesting read. Let me know if you plan to read this book. But that is all the royal tea that I have for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And I am working on the fourth episode of Karina and the King, and I will have it for you guys, I promise, this weekend. Thank you for stopping by the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.